Hey, I'm Nick Gamer, and welcome to Chef Life. This is a tutorial regarding your staff and how to level them up. The first screen to know and understand is in your dashboard and it's your team screen. Now here you can see in my current playthrough, I have Kasim at level nine, I have Adele at level 14, and our new third staff member, Jiro, at level 10. Now the key on this besides their level, which of course matters in how you play and what they will do for you and how well they'll, they'll make various dishes, but the key portion of this screen is the check marks. You can see Kasim has a green check mark and then an orange, orange question mark. Uh, Adele has a black check mark and then a green check mark and then the question mark where Jiro has two black check marks. Now what this is in reference to, the black check marks are the automatic leveling based on your own progression of the game. Now to unlock Jiro, I had to get one of either Kasim or Adele through their second event, as in that second check mark. Once I completed that, by the next day we had Jiro on our staff. But because we had completed up to that stage, Jiro automatically comes in at that level. So he joined us at level 10. You can see he's on the verge of making level 11. It's only been a couple of days uh, since he has joined the staff. Now, we're gonna have to make progress somewhere, somehow, and I'm not sure what version. It's either getting Kasim up through another event or through getting Jiro up to say level 14, one of those two things will trigger the question mark where Jiro is ready to begin his event, which would then progress him into the next level. Now, Adele right now at level 14 is capped at level 14. She is capped at level 14 until we complete her event. So Kasim right now is a great example for us as the lowest. He completed his first event. He's got that green check mark. So events come with those green check marks, but then he's locked in on that second event, not yet complete. That caps him at level nine. He has gained tons of experience beyond level nine. So the moment I complete that event, he will not only unlock the next set of levels, but he will instantly jump to level 14. Now, the key here being these events. Let's figure out what the events are about. So coming over to your, your cork board, here we have specific story events. Now in the case of Adele, to get through her next phase, she needs to make three marinated cubes of beef, three pork and veal meatballs, and three sliced pancetta. But more importantly, let's look at Kasim, especially as this is one of the lower level ones, and figure out as he has a variety of things to complete to get beyond the level he's locked in at currently. So that list, I have two separate types of tasks that must be completed. Now one of those, with Kasim's help, I need to make a mussel casserole or a seafood pasta. Now many of you will quickly recognize that there is no by name mussel casserole or by name seafood pasta to match. But this does provide us the clue we need to sort out what it is we need to do and I'll show you how to do that here in a moment. But in the meantime I also need to ask Kasim to make two clam sauce, two langoustine bouillon, and one cooked spaghetti. Now you can see I've already finished the uh, cooked spaghetti with Kasim, but those other tasks remain unfinished for now. First tip for you, because this information is sufficient in order to figure out what it is you need to do, but you're going to have to do a little bit of investigative work to put the pieces together to make sense of it. So I would suggest, this is a tip, I would suggest that you write this down. Unless you remember it exactly off the top of your head, it's gonna be a mystery crapshoot for a while. So jot it down somewhere. Take a 
picture of it with your phone so you can glance at it, whatever the case may be, whatever is easiest for you, but have this information readily available. And the next part is we're gonna head into the kitchen. I've just finished tonight, so my staff is still standing by. Head to the research table. Now the research table is organized in such a way that actually it can provide you a little bit of support in this process. But we need to look through menu item by menu item by my menu item to find what it is we're searching for. Now starting straight into the restaurant cuisine because a lot of these, if not all of them, I don't know because I haven't gotten through all of the events just yet, but a lot of these, at least that second and third tier of question marks, are going to be tied to restaurant cuisine. Beef meatballs in sauce has nothing to do with muscle casserole or seafood pasta, the two things we are looking for right now. Veal Milanese doesn't involve muscle. Blanquet de veau, I don't know what that's supposed to mean. I don't know what that translates to from French. You don't need to know that either. But look at the, the, the image that's there. That's definitely not mussels. There is no seafood involved as both the mussels and the seafood pasta are tied to seafood in one form or another. Now, Fireside Soups as a multi-recipe comes with a recipe book. Doesn't show me an image, so I don't get that extra support, but Fireside Soups are two warming soup recipes for cold winters. Could be deceiving, doesn't feel likely. One thing I have noticed about all of the events so far, they do come specifically tied to individual recipes. I have not seen any of them tied to any of these multi-recipe unlocks. So there's hopefully all the way to the end, a trend that would continue. The Carpaccio lemon marinated beef. No, that's not seafood. The Sol Roulade. No, that one's not it either. Sauteed veal. No. Classic bouffe bur bourguignon. No. Another double, but it's pasta. Pasta could include so trial by error you could try here's your trick mussels marinere french fries mussels there's your key we were looking for a recipe involving mussels and here it is right there in the name and in the image you can see the mussels as well will contain within their shells that's it for that second event even though the name doesn't match perfectly the clues are there. It does provide you with enough information that you can process of elimination and just go through and find it. But here's another hint for you. So we find one, that's the mussels, but he had two recipes that you could grab from. The other, seafood, seafood spaghetti. Here, you have spaghetti with clams. Clams are a seafood and that's a spaghetti. So spaghetti with clams is the seafood spaghetti. And the clue that I was going to offer you, they're right next to each other on the table. Now the second event for Adele was about a tartare. Here's a traditional steak tartare. And look how we had Kasim, one, two items. And then you go straight to the next one. And here is your steak, so beef, tartare. So big clue, they're bunched together and they're gonna follow in a progressive manner. I would imagine our next wave of recipes that we're going to need to, to know, to learn, to master, are gonna be somewhere along this portion, this next row, or maybe the row after, but still somewhere contained within the restaurant cuisine, unless it pushes us down into the bistro, uh, which it might. The big tip being that they do tend to be bunched together on what they are requiring of you. And there they are. Now, there's a second phase to this process, though. For that second phase, you need to hop over to the recipe book. And here is where you're going to have to break things down a little bit more. They will often request specific cuts in a specific manner. Best way to figure out where to find that is you're gonna to have to hop in recipe by recipe and have a look. So if we, for instance, jump into the autumn soup, when you open it up, 
the recipe is going to have a description of what to do. Now, as this is not one involving any meats or any cuts, it's not a very good example. So go back to the table of contents. The carpaccio certainly does. So let's look at this beef carpaccio. And here, right at the beginning, and most of these recipes start with the cuts of meat as one of your first steps. So it shows up pretty much right at the top of the recipe. Here, we go to wooden chopping block. We take a side of beef, we chop it up, and it equals lean beef. One of them, I, I believe it was Adele. She's the one who is very much into beef types of cuts. Lean beef was one of her requirements somewhere along the way. This is your trick on how, how to find which one, because there are so many different beef recipes go through them. Of all your recipes, someone somewhere probably has that varied type of cut that you need. So this one being lean beef is already the right trick. Here, the meatballs in sauce. First step, okay, well that's diced onion, but the second step right there, almost always right near the top of the recipe, we take a side of beef, we chop it up for beef for grinding. So if you need a beef for grinding, there's an example of what it'll be. But follow that pattern and you will find the specifics. And then the process, what you need to do is you can do it in one of two ways. When you get into the day itself, you have your prep station where you can assign one of your staff members to carry something out. Or of course you have during the evening service itself, uh, showing up on the bottom portion of the screen nearby to where my face cam is located right now. You have that big red bar that shows uh, to give orders to your staff. That's the primary one that's going to really help you out. But between these, prep station wise, if you need five cuts of lean beef during prep one day, just get in. Better safe than sorry. Just waste a couple minutes of time, if you have some spare time that is and order the specific individual you need to do. So if it's Adele, order Adele to make five cuts of lean beef. And because we already found which recipe would give you five cuts of lean beef, that carpaccio, go in, have the carpaccio on your menu for one night, go in and have her make five cuts of lean beef because you can't really give her the assignment without it being on, on your menu. So add it to your menu for a day, get your ingredients for the day, and then once she arrives, have Adele take five cuts of lean beef and guaranteed it'll be checked off the next day. Don't guess on the number, don't think you need two more and she's done three already, maybe. Just have her do five and then it's better safe than sorry. With absolute certainty, you know that that will be checked off. If they need to help with a recipe, well, that's pretty easy. Give them that assignment. Make sure that they are the ones to help one night. You have these things written down. You know which recipes to get them from. You'll remember exactly what it is you need to do because if you're like me, in the heat of the moment, in the evening, during the service, you're busy. It's easy to get distracted. But if you have it written down, it's gonna help you a lot. All right, folks, well, hopefully that will help you get through what to do for these events. Once you complete that task list, they will progress. They'll move on to the next one. And that is a beautiful path forward because let me tell you, after two days of having three staff members, oh, yeah, life is easy. I just went from a capacity of 10 for my restaurant and already expanded it to 15 because it's like, yeah, I can handle that now. I feel comfortable. And that comfort will uh, go a long, long ways for you. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Thanks for tuning in. If you like what you saw here, be sure to hit that like button. Leave a comment below to help with the algorithm so this can get there, get out there for more fans of Chef Life. And of course, subscribe for more content. Have a good one. Be safe out there. And bye for now.